So, Phil, imagine yourself in one of the most scariest situations of your life. Imagine doing the one thing everyone tells you to do in an emergency. Imagine calling for help, but the 911 operator ignores you and help doesn't come. In today's case, that would be the brutal reality for two sisters. This is the case of Bree and Kaylee Lastly. everybody and welcome back to another episode of tell me darling i'm your host jess and this is my co-host 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 and husband <laughs> phil. darling phil. phil this is phil <laughs> everyone say hi phil <laughs> hi phil um so we're on episode four which means our podcast is live which mm-hmm. is exciting so people are listening and tuning in which is also scary um because mm. we're filming Ahead of time. So, we haven't launched so, while we're filming. So, hopefully this. people are watching. <laughs> hopefully people are watching and listening on oh. Spotify and like it. There'll and be two views. My mum and my grandma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe four. My sisters will join in on that. Yeah. But I feel like with each episode, we're like getting comfortable and we're progressing and we're getting yeah. better. I was a little angry last week. Yeah. But we had some shit going on like... You know, it's been a week, but this week's mm. been pretty hectic too in our lives. Our children mm. are tag teaming being sick, so we haven't really been sleeping much. No. There's been lots of bed sheet washing, which sucks. Just, it's not been great, but we're here because mm-hmm. I'm forced him to be here because I love doing this, but I think you really like hearing the stories. Yeah, I do. I love sitting here and listening to you. Yeah, we love true <laughs> crime stories. <laughs> Um, but anyway, what's been happening for you this week? Um, yeah, lots, lots happening. Mm-hmm. As you know, we've, um, busy with work yeah. as usual. Um, the kids, mm-hmm. that's been full on. Um, and it just sucks the kids being sick. You know yeah. It is because there's nothing we can really do. And I hate, yeah. I hate seeing them sick. I'd yeah. rather it be me. I think maybe. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> mm, I don't but think yeah, that I the just, kids winch as much as you yeah, do when you're sick. Um, yeah, this just sucks. I hate seeing them sick because it's yeah. just like, why well, I want to sit there with them. Like, what can I do that's going to make them feel better? Yeah, so, for sure. Um, and we're getting a new fence, new side fence. Oh, yes, 80, we are. 83 meters of it, but my good neighbor's building it himself. So <laughs> <laughs> Phil if you're listening to, get... to this neighbor, <laughs> thanks. Thank you, neighbor. Yeah, Phil mm. managed to get out of that one. But to be fair, Phil's pretty busy. I mm. struggle enough as it is trying to get him to sit down once a week to film this podcast but i'm grateful that you're here thanks my little co-host yeah. my little darling um and that's i think that's it in my yeah. world cool yeah. well i have a case for you today <laughs> this is one of the earlier cases that i ever listened to when i started listening to true crime and i still remember listening to this story for the first time on the edge of my seat like it's one of my favorite true crime stories it's one that I like always come back to so I knew that I wanted to share this one like this one being the first one after like our Australian true crime trio series Mm -hmm. um so yeah I'm really excited to get into it and I don't want to waste any more time so let's go let's get into it do I say it tell me darling (laughs) tell me darling very good okay In 2015, sisters Bree and Kaylee were excited to finally be moving out of their home and into their own house in Salt Lake City in Utah. The house was perfect for this stage of... Utah. Utah. What's the Utah basketball team? The Utah team of basketball. Incorrect. Is it? What is it? Utah Jazz. Utah Jazz. What do they wear? What color? They wear a jersey, of course. Yeah, but what color? Um, They wear blue Mm -hmm. and uh, I think they're... What's their away jersey? Maybe a white, Mm -hmm. but their main color is blue. So yeah, we're in Utah. The house is perfect for this stage of their lives. 27-year-old Brie had just started her own business and 22-year-old Kaylee was working a good job and going steady with her boyfriend. Hang on, are they sisters? They are sisters. Okay. Yes. All right. 27, 25, Utah. Yeah. 
So the home that they moved into was technically a one story, but like, do you know those houses that are like kind of raised up on bricks? It's like... Yeah, don't say like, you like, you walk up. You walk up like five stairs onto and the then first you, level. And then you can go down? And then inside the house, you can go down. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like a... Um, I don't, I don't, I know there's a word for it and I even tried to Google it, but my words were just not that great. Um, Mm. so yeah, it had like, you walk up to the ground floor and then it had like a lower floor, which was like a couple of stairs down, but it also had a basement, which was, um, like a proper basement underground with like a full set of stairs just to like clarify. Um, so the two levels plus a basement. Yeah. But it was, it was kind of like a split home. So like. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? It's I not know like what you one mean, on top but of each I don't other. know the name of it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. There's we don't a have word that for many it. here. If you know what it is, share it. Um, okay. So Kaylee decided that she liked the coziness of the downstairs basement. So she moved her stuff downstairs. And Brie preferred the natural light in the upstairs bedroom. So she went upstairs. And there was a backyard, perfect for entertaining friends. And it felt safe given that the block was surrounded by a seven foot high fence. They spent their first few days in their new home unpacking boxes and visiting homeware stores to turn the house into a home. So they're settling in. They're excited. It's like the first time they've lived out of home. And yeah, it's a good time for them. Yep. So the date is Wednesday. It's the 23rd of September, just six days after moving in. The girls would say goodnight to each other and Kaylee headed downstairs to her bedroom while Brie headed upstairs to hers. <laughs> I'm so excited to tell you the story. Why? I don't, it's just, it's just so good. Like okay. if I'm smiling, it's not because I'm like happy. I just like think it's a cool story. Anyway. So before she went to sleep that night, Brie decided to send off a couple of last minute emails that had been playing on her mind. She was sitting on her bed, listening to music when she heard a voice outside of her window. She dismissed it and left her bedroom to go to the bathroom. When she returned, she heard the voice again, more clearly this time. She glanced towards the window, but there was nothing out of the ordinary. Besides that, her window was more than seven feet off the ground and there was a big fence around the property. So there was little chance that someone was actually out there. What did the voice say? I'll get to it. Oh. She just heard, she just thought she heard something. Yep. It wasn't distinct. So mm-hmm. she was like, maybe it's the wind. Like She's the one that's upstairs. Yes. Okay. So when like. Did, go back a little bit. Okay. Um, so they've, they moved to this new place in Utah Jazz. Yeah. In Utah Jazz. In Utah. <laughs> Utah. <laughs> Utah. <laughs> so, but she was living, were they living with their parents before that? Yeah. So they've okay. moved out of home. And how far away is that? I'm not sure. It doesn't, it's not relevant to the story. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. It's always relevant. How Not far too away far you're... though, because okay. their parents helped them move in. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, they were there. Um, so anyway, she's back to the, she's in her bedroom. She hears something. She looks out there. She doesn't see anything, whatever, goes back to what she's doing. So Brie put the noises down to the wind, which had picked up that evening. Uh, but just to be on the safe side, she put an alarm on her phone to remind her to close the window before she went to sleep. She finished her last couple of emails and brushed her teeth before turning off the light and getting into bed. But just as Brie was dozing off, she hears another noise. So she looks through the window and when she can finally see into the darkness of the night, she notices a man standing right outside of her window. And in a creepy, calm voice, he says the famous five words that will change Brie's life forever. Run, bitch, run. (laughs) That's four, sorry. Um, How... How close? Like to the window. He like like right there. He's there. Oh shit. Yeah. He says, Hey girl, I'm coming in. How scary Fuck. is that? That's... Hey girl, I'm coming in. Did he have a mask or anything on? No, he didn't have a mask on. And so the home obviously was like a little bit off the ground. I would say like this much. And I so heard So she would have been looking down at him? Well, or... I heard on another podcast, but I couldn't find anywhere else to like I think it's like just like an old wives' tale. I don't know if it's true. But he may have been standing on a chair. So uh-huh. that they were eye level. Damn. Which is what um like the other person in the podcast said, like maybe the noises were him like grabbing the chair yep. to move it. And that's why she didn't see anything at first. But he's at eye level. So the man was a 48-year-old Robert Berger who had actually just run away from a halfway house and he starts making his way in through the window. What a name, Robert Berger. Robert is a stupid name. 
Robert had recently been released from prison. Apparently, he had like a super long rap sheet of burglary and like dangerous weapons and he'd put in, been put into the halfway house where his parole would be monitored very closely. They were supposed to be like giving him dinner and just keeping an eye on him. So that night he actually escaped the halfway house and he tried to break into another house that was down the street. But that family had actually fought back. They heard him at the window. They fought him and then they called the cops and scared him off. So... Yeah. This is like his second attempt for the night. In the same night? Same night. Hopefully police in the area are aware, <laughs> maybe, you Well, think? it only like, like he's like gone to that house, and couldn't get in. pretty much fought him off. Straight to the next house. Yeah. So like very minimal time there. So back to Brie, Robert's climbing in through her window. So in shock, Brie leapt from her bed and she rushed towards the window. She hoped that she could push the stranger back through the way he came in, but it was too late. Oh, so he was already inside. In the time that it took for her to get across the room, the man had climbed all the way into the bedroom. He drew himself up to this his full height and he was huge. This guy was at least six feet tall and 200 pounds and towered over Bree's five foot frame. The man had no shirt on and despite the dim lighting, Brie could make out tattoos over his muscular figure, which, oh, so scary. Mm. So scary. Like I'm like, oh, I'm on the edge of my seat already. What's the weather doing in um, Utah that time of year? Is it summer? Is that their summer time? No, it's fall, which is like our autumn. So like it was breezy and a bit cool. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So Brie grabs her phone and tries to call for help. But before she can, Robert began attacking her, using his fists and he began to punch and hit her in the face. Brie put her hands up to defend herself, but it wasn't really that great because she's tiny. She was just no match for Robert. So Robert punched her repeatedly as she begged him to stop. Brie realised that if she screamed, her sister would come to see what was going on. And she was worried that if Kaylee entered the room, she would be in the crosshairs of Robert too. So she tried to stay quiet. She asked Robert what he wanted. Was it money or drugs? She offered her car, her phone, her laptop, anything to get him to leave. Yeah. But Robert didn't seem interested in anything that she had to offer and Brie realised he was there for something much more sinister. Um, She, in that moment, all she thought was like, Robert, this man, she doesn't know who he is, but she just thought he's going to rape me. Like he's here to rape me and that's what's going to happen. So as he landed a punch in her stomach, he whispered, shut up and cooperate with me or I'm going to get your little sister. Oh, he knew. He He said that to her. So in that moment, Bree knew that the man had been watching them and then that this was like no random attack. Okay, watching them or he like he knows someone they know? They don't know him at all. Okay. No, he'd been yeah. watching them. They'd only right. been there for six days. So yeah. he'd obviously been staking out the neighborhood and like looking at different houses he could break into. And maybe he chose the family first thinking it would be like easier or whatever, but obviously they fought him back. So yeah. the next stop was Bree and Kaylee's house. So they'd only lived in their house for six days and yet he knew there were two women in the home and that they were sisters. At this point, Bree is full of adrenaline and instantly when he starts talking about his sister goes into defensive mode. Like before she was thinking, I just don't want to get raped. But now she's thinking, I don't want my sister to get raped. And so she starts fighting back like crazy. And I can relate to this because I have two sisters and if anyone tried to touch them, I would... I just feel like, yeah, it would just like fuel you. You just go fucking crazy. Yeah, well, you fight people in the clubs for your friends. For my friends. Imagine what <laughs> I do for my sisters. I would just like give, I would give my life for them. So I can definitely relate to yeah. how she's feeling in this moment. So she hits him between the legs and like in the nuts. Or kicks him in the nuts. She kicks him in the nuts and she makes a breakaway and goes and runs downstairs into the kitchen to grab a knife. Cool. But she realizes in the moment, you know, like if I get this knife and somehow he's able to get this from me, like he's yeah. going to stab me and I could die. So she's like, I'm not going to bring a weapon into this. And she runs past it. And at this point, as soon as she gets further away, she decides to start screaming for her sister, Kaylee. She's like, Kaylee, Kaylee, help. Like there's someone in the house. I need help. Get up here. Um, so Kaylee is asleep in the basement and she wakes up to Brie screaming and like muffled sounds coming from the floor above. So Kaylee leaps out of bed and she races up the stairs where she sees the huge stranger like towering over Brie in the kitchen, like beating her and like a surge of adrenaline rushed through Kaylee and she races towards Robert. 
But good on them. And she jumps on his back and she just starts like punching him and like yeah. clawing his eyes out and like scratching him. Like she was giving absolutely everything she had. And they called like on every movie that they had seen and every book that they had read about like attacking the most sensitive parts of their yeah. attacker. So like their eyes and their groin. But this guy was huge. And despite their efforts, nothing they did seemed to make a dent in his attack or slow him down. And if anything, it seemed to encourage him and the attack became more violent. Robert was absolutely wild. Wild. He picked Brie up like a rag doll and threw her towards the stairs, which led down to the basement. But Kaylee rushed to her sister's defense and stood like in the doorway at the top of the stairs to block yeah. Robert from coming forward. And instead, he lifts up his leg and he kicks Kaylee in the chest and she flies down the stairs. Like a 300, this is Sparta kick. Sparta kick, kick. Oh. yeah. There were 17 stairs leading mm. down to the basement and Kaylee missed every single one of them. She hit the bottom. She flew. Whoa. Um, so her flight was only stopped when her head hit the wall at the bottom of the stairs and it turned out that this was the only wall in the whole house not made of solid brick. It was the only plastered wall. Oh, that's lucky. So lucky. Mm. Like, oh, I can't imagine like if it was made of brick, what would have happened? So then Robert turns around and he grabs Brie to throw her down the stairs, but she grabs onto his shorts when he goes to throw it and they both go tumbling down the stairs together. So now they're all in the basement mm -hmm. and straight away Kaylee's like back onto Robert. She's punching, she's fighting, she's giving him everything that she's got. And suddenly in the midst of the chaos, Brie realizes that her phone is still strapped to her wrist from when Robert jumped through the window. So back in 2015, like, oh, like the the running iPod case type thing. It's things? like, yeah, it's like those straps that you had and it was like linked to the case that you clip your phone in and like, yeah, you just like slide it onto your oh, wrist and okay. whatever. So like in like a habit when Robert jumped through the window, she yeah. had her phone, she slid it onto her wrist. Like she didn't even think about it. Yep. But she's just now realizing like that's still attached to her wrist. Oh, yep. So um, she unwraps the strap and she throws the phone like on a stair above her because she needs to help Kaylee. Like yep. she can't just leave Kaylee. And she yells, Siri, call 911. Oh, wow. Yeah. So at first, Siri keeps rejecting her voice like again and again. She's like, doesn't recognize. And then Brie like yells and she's like, Siri, call 911. And it finally worked and the phone would ring and she heard the call connect to the operator and Bree starts screaming into the phone mm -hmm. and like, she's like, I need help, help. He's like trying to kill us. We need help. And the dispatcher dispatcher's like, what's going on? Where are you? Like, what's your name? Hello. Like she seems annoyed at Bree and Bree is screaming like, help, help, send us help. And the dispatcher keeps asking questions. So finally, Brie just starts screaming their address. Like yeah. during the call, you can hear Kaylee screaming. You can hear Robert yelling. And at one point, because, because he's been in prison for so long, Robert's like, who's Siri? Like he doesn't realize that like oh. what Brie's doing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she's screaming their new address. She's like 850 South Roberta Street, like just screaming it. And by then the man had managed to get his arms free from the tangle and he began punching Bree and Kaylee again. And Bree screamed out, screamed out their address again while she fought off Robert. And the girls would be like between them, they would call 911 four times and mm -hmm. it would kept like getting disconnected. And yep. the call to 911 should have marked the beginning of the end of the sister's ordeal. And an officer should have been dispatched and their attacker should have been apprehended. While the girls fought for their lives, they believed help was around the corner and all they, they needed to do was hold on a little longer. But help wasn't on the way. No one was coming to save them and the attack was far from over. So neither of the girls knew that the 911 operator hadn't dispatched anyone to their address, not during the first call and not from any of the other three calls that Kaylee managed to make while they were fighting for their uh. lives. They were totally alone, left to fend for themselves again against a more than twice their size man. So after the 911 call disconnected, Bergen managed to get the phone and he threw it out of reach. So the phone was gone. Robert then puts his hand around Kaylee's throat and was holding her by the neck up against the same wall that her head had smashed through moments earlier. So he's strangling her now. Mm -hmm. And without thinking about her own so safety, Bree pulled out, pulled herself out of the tangle. She stood up and then she tried like tackling Robert through the door at the bottom of the stairs to land in the laundry. And Robert released Kaylee's throat. But when the fall was over, he landed on top of Brie and he immediately began to punch her in the face while he was like holding her legs and arms down. Yeah. And like, like she was pinned. He couldn't move. Man, these girls seem tough. 
yeah, they're just like, oh, I just like have so much like respect for them. So he said to Brie, I'm going to fucking kill you. Like, like clear as day. And Kaylee, who um, he just strangled like on the floor, gets up and says, no, I'm going to fucking kill you. Yeah. And in that moment, like even though Brie's like getting the shit like kicked out of her, she's like, holy mm. shit like Kaylee yeah. just swore because these girls like don't cuss like they're good sweet girls they don't mm. cuss and she's like oh my god like Kaylee just said the f word and that's like all she can think about in the moment even though he's like beating her up which yeah. is like so funny so then Kaylee starts hitting Robert on the back from behind and Brie is still underneath him when suddenly Robert pulls out a knife he had a knife this whole time yeah so Bree's initial thoughts were like, I'm going to die and my sister's going to watch me get murdered. And Bree screams to Kaylee, go and get help. Like we need help. And Bree thought it was the only chance that they had. Like maybe she'd be able to go and get help. But either way, at least she would be away from their attacker. At least if Kaylee left, like one of them would mm. live. But Kaylee refused. She's like, I'm not leaving. She wouldn't walk out on her sister when she needed her the most. So are they saying this as they're all fighting? As they're like just they're, punching yeah. and clawing and scratching. She's like, go and get help. Yep. Um, so finally, Kaylee's like, like this, it, this isn't going to end if I don't leave and go and get help. Like we're both going to die. So quickly, Kaylee turned away from her sister and she started running up the stairs and she flicked on the light as she left. But as she was running up the stairs, she hears Bree screaming in pain. And then mm. she hears Bree say, he's stabbing me. He's stabbing me. So Bree couldn't feel the stab wounds, but like, because she's like full yeah, of adrenaline, yeah. they're fighting. But once like Kaylee turned on the light, she could physically see that like Robert was stabbing her. Crazy, right? Man. Oh, they put up such a good fight. Mm, I know. It's like really sad. So... Robert stabbed Brie in the stomach over and over and then he punched Brie in the right leg with the knife like just like boom and like dragged the knife up four inches and like it obviously didn't hurt her but she knew that she yeah. was going to die. So Brie tried to keep fighting him. He stood up and said now I'm going to get your little sister and then he laughed. Yeah. And then so he stood up said I'm going to get your little sister and laughed and Brie was like like, no, like, who is he? Like, he doesn't know my name. He doesn't know my family. He doesn't know my dreams. He doesn't know my goals. He doesn't know anything about me and he's happily going to murder me. Mm -hmm. And as he was getting up to go and get her sister, Bree sits up and all of a sudden, like, grabs his arms and she somehow, like, manages to tackle him and hold his arms down. They were on the ground, like, face to face. Their noses were almost touching. And she said, like, what are you doing? Who are you? Mm -hmm. And he didn't answer. And Bree said, like, what do you need? How can I help you? Like, talk to me. Please just talk to well, me. Well, she's, like, after she's been stabbed. Yeah. She's just, like, like he said, I'm going to get Kaylee. And she, had, like, the strength of little her was just, like, Kaylee. No. Kaylee's the little sister yeah, that, who's gone help. Did he say, I'm going to get Kaylee or I'm going to get your little sister? I'm going to get your little sister, okay. yep. which is it's Kaylee. Yep. So she's like, like just summons the strength and yeah. is like, absolutely not. Um, so after she's like, please just talk to me, he put his head down and just says, I'm sorry. Finally, there was a break in the violence and Bree took the opportunity to tell him that he could take her phone, he could take her computer, her car, whatever he wanted to just leave her and Kaylee alone. And then she had another idea. She told Robert that there was $1,000 hidden in a shoebox in Kaylee's room. So Bree claims, uh, Bree's claim was a ruse and one that she thought like would hope give her sister like a fighting chance. And her gamble did pay off and the man told her to show him where the money was and they stood up to go and get it. But as quickly as he had switched from angry to calm, he went right back to the monster who... Who had stabbed her brutally before? Yep. He told Brie he was going to kill her and rape her and abuse her dead body. And the band picked up a suitcase which had Kaylee had used when she moved and hit Brie directly in the face and knocked her tooth out, like yeah. broke her tooth. So this act reignited the fight in Brie and she began laying into the man again. After being stabbed. Stabbed, hit in the face with a suitcase. Damn. She's like, fucking not today. Yeah, like, not ain't. my sister. So with all the energy that she could muster, she punched and kicked and scratched him. But obviously she'd been stabbed. She's tired. She's been fighting for so long at this point. But she was no match for Robert. He had a knife and a suitcase at this point. He used the suitcase to hit her in the stomach again and pushed her back down onto the floor. And he pinned her arms down by her side so she was completely immobile once again. 
Now, while Brie was fighting for her life in the basement, Kaylee's running up and down the street, like screaming for help, like, help, somebody's in my house, he's stabbing my sister. And eventually, she sees a man standing a couple of houses away. Yep. She runs up to him, and as she gets closer, she realizes that this man is a police officer. So two blocks away from the girl's apartment, police canine officer Ben Hone had just finished up with a call out. He had just put his dog in the back of his vehicle when he heard Kaylee's wild screams. That night he had been called out to the scene of a break-in, like at the start of our story. But after looking around the area, officers had failed to find any trace of anyone. So they were starting to leave. But this disturbance from a couple of blocks over... Um, he could hear, he could like hear someone screaming. So he heads, he heads towards the direction of the screams and ran straight into Kaylee as she sprinted down the street screaming for help. Yep. He's like, what's going on? And she pointed out the house and tried to describe what was happening. She told Officer Hone that her sister was in the basement. There was a man better. down yeah, there with a knife. Her. Yeah, there was 17 stairs, like just like every detail and begged yep. him to help her. So Kaylee and Officer Hone like start running back to the house like as fast as she can possibly get. And I'm like... Like, this is like out of a movie. Like, yeah. they're fucking bolting. By then, Brie and the intruder's fight had resulted in both of them sitting on the floor with her back to his chest. So, he's like over her. Yeah. He had his legs wrapped around her and like just keeping her in place while he held the knife to her throat with one hand and like the other arm like kept her like pinned down. Yeah. And Brie could feel like the blade of her knife at her jugular as she like repeatedly like begged him to like let her go. And as the knife pressed into her skin, her only thought was at least Kaylee got away. Like, at least Mm -hmm. Kaylee doesn't have to be here. It's not going to happen to her. Like, she's out. And her last words were, okay, you can kill me. Please just don't kill my sister. She was like, I'm like trying to imagine my sisters in this scenario. I hope she doesn't die. Please don't tell me she dies. Mm, Okay. So, at the same moment as the intruder's arm flexed for the kill, a dark shape appeared in the stairs leading towards the basement. The shadow yelled, drop the knife. We're fucking bang, so bang, bang. Officer Holmes outstretched his arm and held a gun out, like which glinted in the light so yeah. they could see him. And the demand didn't prop like any response from Robert. He didn't drop the knife. He didn't release tension in his arms and he didn't let go of Brie. Instead, he pulled Brie closer so that his lips were at her ear and moved his body to the angle to the, like, he was like going to slit her throat. Like yep. he's ready to go. And at that moment... One single gunshot yes. reverberated through an enclosed basement. Officer Hone had fired into the dark from 12 feet, feet away and despite the odds, his bullet found his mark. Yes. In that moment, the In intruder the had moved his arm to position his knife. He had inadvertently moved his head out of line with Breeze and it was in that split second that Officer Hone took his shot right between the eyes, in the face. Good. Got Robert. So immediately after the shot, the knife clattered onto the floor and Brie felt the weight of her attacker slump against her back. The man who had tried to kill her was dead. Yes. How good. That's good. This is the first time we've had a um, one of the killers die. Insane though. Like just like a single shot. Yeah. Like, he deserves a medal. Oh, so lucky. So mm-hmm. Officer Hone told Brie like, get up, get up the stairs as yeah. he was calling in saying like, gunshot, man dead, woman stab wounds to the abdomen. I don't think yeah. she's going to make it. Like he's calling in the radio right now. She stood up and all of a sudden she's at the top of the stairs. Like she doesn't know how she got to the top, but she did. And Officer Hone told her like, that's the fastest he's ever seen anyone run upstairs. But originally, like she didn't even think that she was going to be able to stand up. At the top of the stairs, Brie looked to the right and there she was, Kaylee. Mm-hmm. Kaylee put her hands over her mouth. She was in shock as she looked at Brie's body. Blood was gushing out and she said, Brie, and she ran up to her and Brie would later recall that she that like that was the best moment of her life. Yeah. So Officer Hone called for an ambulance and police backup. He could see that Brie was severely injured and even though he had stopped the attack, he didn't trust that he had arrived in time. His experience told him it was unlikely Brie was going to make it. Damn. She was covered in blood from head to toe and there were no signs of her bleeding slowing down. The time between Kaylee seeing the officer in the street and him bursting through the front door was seven seconds. That's how fast they ran. Oh, wow. Had it been just a few seconds longer, Bree would likely not have survived the attack. But she wasn't out of the woods yet. Moments later, the ambulance arrived and Bree rushed into the emergency. Was rushed into emergency. Oh my god, emergency surgery! 
It turned out that the stab wounds had missed her aorta by mere millimetres and after multiple scans, doctors were amazed to realise all of her other veins and organs were intact. Her survival was nothing short of a miracle. She was kept in hospital overnight and released the very next day with her doctors telling her that she would make a full recovery. Physically, they were fine, but mentally, like the recovery was not going to be straightforward. Yeah. Against all odds, both girls had survived the attack and yet there was one real fight that had to begin. The trauma that lived with Brie and Kaylee to this day cannot be understated. While the physical scars are mostly healed, the emotional ones remain. Now we know Brie and Kaylee survived thanks to their own strength and unwillingness to give up, but was everything that they went through like necessary? Why had no one come to help the girls after four calls. Mm. So a subsequent investigation revealed all four calls had been answered appropriately. In some cases, you hear about the phone disconnecting or the connection being poor. But in this instance, all four calls had connected to the operator exactly as they should have. Priority Dispatch was the company responsible for training the 911 dispatchers who took the girls' calls that night. And when asked to explain why no officers had been dispatched, they claimed that the girls did not give them the accurate address for them to be able to respond to. It is written in their internal procedure that help is only dispatched if the call caller answers every question the operator, to the operator's standard. Mm-hmm. But obviously, like when you're being attacked yeah, 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 by a drug crazed yeah. lunatic and you're fighting for your life, like you're not going to be able to answer questions or and every who's question. Prank, prank call that. Yeah. And, yes. like, they knew that they couldn't answer her questions, like, in the moment. So, instead of, like, like they started yelling out their address. Like, yeah. he's killing me. Here's my address. Yeah. Like, what more do you want? So, because of the commotion in the background and the woman's screams drowning out some of the calls, apparently, the operator disconnected the line without sending help. Mm. The company's defense was that, essentially, that Bree and Kaylee were to blame for help not being sent. If they had been karma and more articulate, the operator would have helped them. That's some bullshit. Mm -hmm. So Brie and Kaylee later filed a lawsuit against Priority Dispatch, claiming that their trauma would not have been so deep if help had been sent when they called. Their ordeal took a little over eight minutes, but if an officer had been sent at the time of the first call, it could have been over much sooner. So in 2019, after Priority Dispatch reiterated its perspective, Brie released the audio from one of the calls. In it, Brie and Kaylee can be heard screaming and begging for help, and they can also be heard repeating their address multiple times. While the sound is chaotic, it is not indecipherable, as Priority Dispatch claimed. So I'm going to play you the audio now and then see what you think. Yeah, let's hear it. I don't want to hear it. There's a... So that was one of the first calls. There's obviously more calls. Um, But Brie has spoken extensively about her experience that night and the impact it has had on her. She is able to repeat almost word for word how the attack unfolded and what was running through her mind at the time. She describes the emotional after effect of the attacks as like being in a strange dream. She says it's different now. Things I used to do easily, I can't do right now. I Mm. used to run every day. Running was my stress reliever, not like not even to get to exercise, but it was just therapeutic for me mentally. Since the attack, I've run outside only three times. Nothing has been harder for me than those little changes in my life. However, Brie is determined to gain back control over her life. She underwent extensive therapies to overcome her PTSD, including eye movement desensitization therapy, desensitization therapy, and reprocessing reprocessing therapy. There's some big words for me. It's all right, honey. I remember my first time reading. (laughs) So, and then there are the emotions, which are more difficult to understand, such Mm. as her feeling towards her attacker. Yeah. 
She says, I have very close family, a very close family member with drug addiction, and I have friends who have drug addictions. I know it's real. I thought of them and thought, oh my word, this is someone's brother. This is someone's dad or husband. The moment he said he was sorry, I said, it's okay. And for that split second, I felt love for him. But don't be confused. It wasn't my love for him. I have no love for him. But I knew that someone somewhere loved him. And that moment and thought I had is honestly what has carried me through this last year knowing that although he made many terrible choices throughout his life that unfortunately brought him into my basement that night someone loved him I had felt his head blow up I had felt him die and I know he needed to die but seconds before had also felt a love that someone had for him it was sad for me I struggle with that still as much as he needed to die it was sad to still feel him die Brie took many things to heart from that night. She realized pretty quickly that she never wanted to feel helpless again and started training in self-defense. She opened Be Up Movement, which is a company that sells home locks and other items that can help women increase their feelings of safety and confidence. She also teamed up with fellow violent survivor Elizabeth Smart to start the organization Fight Like Girls. It's a mission to help women endure and rebuild their lives after experiencing life-changing traumas like abuse, eating disorders, single motherhood and more. This is not to say that Brie and Kaylee's recovery has been positive. They have both experienced depression, post-traumatic stress and ongoing anxiety and their healing has come from different places. Kaylee is still incredibly close to her sister and is an active part of her organization. She is grateful that both of them were able to survive that night, but her way of coping is in stark contrast to that of Brie. While Brie's healing comes from sharing her story and encouraging other women in their life challenges, Kaylee's healing has come in the form of putting the incident behind her and moving on. She doesn't speak about her experience that night. In her opinion, the attacker stole six minutes of their life from then and Kaylee won't allow him to have a single second more. Mm. The girls were later able to meet Officer Hone in person to thank him for saving their lives. In 2016, he was awarded Officer of the Year for his quick thinking and careful execution of his shot in the Lastly case. So he should be. Ultimately, this is a story of survival, of overcoming, of fighting back, but that story has come at a cost. Bree and Kaylee did exactly what they were supposed to do when faced with the situation and yet their calls for help went unanswered. Had help come a minute or two or five minutes earlier, maybe Bree wouldn't have been stabbed and maybe they wouldn't have struggled so much with the emotional effects of the attack. And while the attacker's actions are ab- abhorrent, earlier intervention intervention from authorities might have spared his life too mm. and that's the story Damn. of Bree and kaylee lastly yeah a fight um, for survival that's um i can see why you were excited to tell me i was like yeah. why are you excited to tell me a, this type of story mm-hmm. but it's good that they survived terrible what they went through yeah um but she had some really powerful words afterwards the k brie brie mm-hmm. yeah and good on her for doing like those things happen like she's gone and created an organization Mm -hmm. locks and that other thing that's helps support women after those types of events yeah she's turned Um, something really negative into something positive but i just like but yeah the fuck that that would have been the scariest so the whole what the whole thing from the moment he she's seen him at the window to him him getting shot was that roughly 10 minutes was it about 15 yeah about 15 minutes yeah oh but it could have been long it would have been shorter because they called the police before he even pulled the knife hey so if the police had come sooner maybe no stabbings would have happened yeah yeah insane but that's yeah you're not wrong that would be the scariest thing of your life well two of those things number one seeing someone at your window yeah i'm coming in yeah um and then two calling who you someone who you think's meant to be there to help you yeah but that happens a lot a lot it does happen a lot yeah, yeah. but insane insane and i just have like again just so much respect for like their like it's not even like their fight for themselves like they were fighting for each other yeah the way that yeah they were yeah they were really looking out for each other the whole time all they could think about was the other person like Mm. and that's just like sisterhood right there so i know we don't want to talk about the crazy motherfucker Mm. what was he did he have a motive or was he high on drugs you know did they do an autopsy on him afterwards he was definitely high on drugs which is why like they were punching and kicking the shit out of this guy nothing was happening Mm. um but no did he want to? Obviously, he didn't want to kill him. Did he Did he want anything at first or he just didn't know what he was doing? Well, he said, like, I, I'm going to kill you. So, mm. his intention was to kill them. Um, but, like, other than that, like, Who no knows? real yeah. 
like the motive was to kill. Don't do drugs. Yeah, don't do drugs, guys. But yeah, I just like I love that story. I yeah, just like good, love this good story. St- well, I don't love the story, but no. I love that it's a survivor story. Yeah, I think I'm just, can you just tell me survivor stories? Survivor stories yeah. from now. They Survi- are, the vic- the victim surviving. Yeah. That's all I want to hear. I don't yeah. want to hear anything about the I do love a good survivor story. Yeah. I just love when people fight back. Mm. I hope that if I'm ever in a scary situation like that, that I fight back. I hope you're never in a situation oh, like that. Me too, obviously. But I think like when other people mm. are involved that you love, like if it's my kids or oh, yeah. like my sisters or you, like mm-hmm. my friends, I'm swinging. Yeah. I'm swinging. I mean, I've done it before. <laughs> never yeah. like a life or death, but I definitely have mm. smacked a bitch in the club for touching my friends. So I think I'm like, okay, <laughs> maybe. But anyway, that was this week's uh, episode, which I've been dying to tell. So hopefully I did it justice and I told it well. Um, as I get to like the end of my scripts, my eyes start to give way and I start like tripping on my words. Yeah. And I'm a bit like silly. So sorry if I like stumbled, but. Maybe you should put your glasses on. Maybe I should put my yeah. glasses on. Um, cool. Well, good. Good podcast, babe. Thanks. Nah, <laughs> that was good. It was you just good. left me hanging on a good. high five. Cool. Well, um, don't forget to uh, like. <laughs> like and subscribe. Oh, my God. Oh, you have one job. One job. Yeah, you guys will have our Insta socials. We're on YouTube. So, some of you might be watching. So, subscribe to our YouTube and subscribe to our Spotify. Mm. And, yeah, follow us on Instagram. We'll be sharing, like, all the uh, victim, like, pictures and photos and, like, case stuff on there. Like, all of that. Um, but that's it so thanks for listening let us know if you have any case suggestions too drop them drop them on instagram but yeah that's us cool tell me next week bye darlings (laughs) is that right that was good